Welcome to another Darktable tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking these raw images that we got from WeSaturate.com, and I'll show you how to apply a watermark over top of the image. You can either apply it directly over top like this, we can put it our own custom one in the bottom corner. So I'll, call you, I'll show you a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, we do that in the darkroom, it's actually a module. So let's apply one to this image right here. We go to darkroom and we see I already have it brought in here, but if you don't have yours, it's not here in your favorites by default. You need to go to more modules in the bottom right hand corner and then just search for watermark. These are in alphabetical order. So it'll be down here at the bottom in the W's and click watermark and then that will appear uh, and we can click on it up here as an option. So there's this drop down when we it's enabled right now. If we click enable, uh, it will show across here. This marker is dark table. We can change it to this has ball, which is a black square. We can change it to this promo, which shows information about Darktable and about the camera and lens. This first one, Darktable, also showed information about the camera and lens and the metadata from the actual image has the Darktable logo there. And then this last one is this simple text. So we can put in our own text and change the color and position of it. So this is probably the one we're gonna to wanna to do right now. You can play with the other ones, but they're not incredibly customizable. This simple text is the only one that's built in that's customizable. And then we can also add our own. So a fifth and a sixth and a seventh. We can add our own custom ones in SVG format. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. But to change this text, we just click in text and we can type in whatever we want, TJ photos. And so we can have that there. And then we can change the color of it. So we click here on color and maybe I'll make this white and go select. So now we can have it really bold and on top there if we want, but we can make it more subtle by going to opacity and turning down that opacity. That's kind of the transparency or how clear it looks. Zero is all the way invisible and 100 is all the way visible. So maybe I'll put it down here to about like 17% or very, very subtle. And there we have it. Um, we can change also the scale, the size of this. We can scale it down we can change the rotation. So maybe we'll rotate it and put it like this. And then we can also change the position of it. So right now it's aligned to the center. We could align it to the right. We could align it to the bottom right corner. We could align it to the bottom. We'll just keep it center aligned right now. And then we can subtly do this X and Y offset to kind of subtly adjust where it's at um, within the picture. So there we go. We have a nice sort of soft watermark now across just with some simple text. Oh, we can also change the font, which is a pretty important one. So you might want to grab a font that's more any installed fonts you have on your system. You can you can put over here. All right. So that's the way to do basic text. That's using the built in module to add our own in here. It's a little bit uh, more complicated. First of all, we need to create it. So if you already have a watermark, then we can just use yours. You just need to put it in SVG format. And if we hover over just hover our mouse over here. Let me zoom in. It'll tell us where to put these. So it says SVG watermarks in your home directory. So mine happens to be home TJ. I'm using Linux. So this file system might look a little different than yours if you're using Windows. Um, and then it's in the dot config dark table in a folder called watermarks. Or it's also in the USR slash share slash share slash dark table slash watermarks. Um, on Windows, I believe it's either in program files or maybe in your app data. I'll try to include the link in the description of this video of where to put it. But what we need to do is go out of Darktable and find that directory. So I'll minimize this. And uh, first of all, I'll just show you, you can use Inkscape, I would recommend doing. So I've done, I've created a quick little logo here using Inkscape. It's just a transparent background. So anything we draw behind this, oh, let me show you real quick. Oh, that I did draw something, oops. Anything we draw behind here, um, it'll show up so we can change the color and it'll, everything is trans, everything in white is transparent in this. Does that make sense? And so I kind of did a little bit of a gradient on black text. I don't know if that'll show up very well or not, but anyway, let's export this. We want to save it actually as an SVG. So I'm going to go to file and I'll go to save. And then I ask, where do you want to save it? Well, we need to go to that location that dark table told us. If we hover over this, it's in the, dot config dark table watermarks. Now on Linux, a dot means it's a, a, a hidden directory. So we can find that if we do like a, this tells us all the, the everything in this directory. Well, if we do ls-ah, there's a bunch of other files with a dot in front of them 
That dot means it's hidden, so it's there, we just can't see it. So this dot config is the one that we want. We can also see those files by just right clicking in here and going to show hidden files. Again, all of these steps are specific to most Linux operating systems, uh, not Windows. So if you're on Windows, you can ignore all this part and you'll have to find it to do it another way. Uh, so now we have our dot config. We'll go into there. We just need to find dark table. So dark table is right here. And we see there is no watermarks folder yet. So we need to create that. Looks like we can't create it from within here. So we need to actually go here another way. So let's, what I've done now, see I, I'm in the dialog for saving. So I need to go to my folders directory or to my file explorer. I need to go to uh, home and then find that. And again, same thing, right click, you can go to show hidden files if you're not seeing those. And then we just need to go to dark table and first create the folder to save it into. Oh, a dot config, I mean first. Dot config, then dark table. And we see here's some configuration stuff for dark table. We just need to right click and go create directory. And then we'll have to call it water marks, spelled exactly like that, all lowercase. Hit enter. Now that this folder's here and empty, we can close out of this and go back in and save our, our uh, SVG there. So we go to save. I know this seems a little complex, but oh, look, it's already there now. So we're in that directory and we'll just call it. Um, we'll just call it uh, up here, TJ custom watermark with some underscores for spaces and we'll hit save. So that's saved as an SVG file. Now we can, f we can see that SVG file. If we were to go into here, config dark table watermarks. Now we see that SVG file. And also, it's also seen by Darktable. Now we don't even have to restart Darktable. We can just come over here to our drop downs now, and we have a new option. Maybe just close the watermark and open it again. Okay. Maybe go back to Light Table and go back into Dark Room. Now it's there. Okay. So we had to we had to reload Dark just the Dark Room, not the program, but just we had to get back into Dark Room. And we show the drop down. We can see now we have another option: TJ Custom Watermark that wasn't there before. We click on that. And that places the TJ custom watermark with all the settings that was there before. Maybe we just go to reset all the settings and do that drop down. Here we go. So now we see this watermark is placed over here. Doesn't look great on this photo. We can align it maybe to the bottom left hand corner and adjust that offset a little bit so that it goes right to there and down to there. Adjust the scale a little bit. So we'll put it there and then we might want to do adjust the opacity. And I just kind of made this little watermark up quick. So it doesn't, that black text, I'd probably make that text white or something. But uh, yeah, that's how you do your own custom watermark. And now that I've put it, aligned it to the bottom left and done this opacity like this, let me turn it up a little bit. If we want to apply it to every image in here, what we can do is just click on it in the light table area. Kind of how we've, we've kind of done this in the past, just not with a watermark. And we go to history stack and click copy. But then under the things to copy, if we uncheck all the changes except for watermark and hit OK, now it's just copied that watermark um, with the opacity and the location that we put it. Now we can click on a couple of these other ones and we can hold control while we select all four of them. And then we can go paste. And then we can just paste that watermark on all four of these. And now we see it. Uh, yeah, I did it. We can't see because it's off the screen, but we can see here. These ones are taller but they are going to be on there. If we double click, we can probably see that. Yeah, it's down there. So we need to come in and adjust it just because of the size of these, but we can see that watermark. So that is adding custom watermarks to images in dark table. And we see that it added to all of those ones. If we had a hundred pictures, we could add a hundred at once. This is a great way to, to watermark uh, images. If you're, you know, going to be sharing them with clients, or if you just want to put a tiny watermark on with your, your website or something, um, yeah. If you have any questions or comments, um, go ahead and leave them below and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.